curious what the buzz regarding Razer's Barracuda X headset is all about? In this video, we are going to let you in on an insider and tell you why this product is a huge game changer for Razer's gaming headset. Unlike its brothers and sisters' earlier releases such as the Black Shark, Kraken, Nari, and Thresher, Barracuda X has a sleek, less-in-your-face design that's perfect for you if you want to keep your virtual battles a secret. This subtle matte headset is a functional piece that you can wear while away from your gaming setup and comes at a price short of $100. But what makes it different from its gaming headset siblings? Is it worth the money? For today's review of Razer's Barracuda X, we are going to cover the affordability, accessibility, design, battery, microphone, and sound quality of these hot headsets. But wait, we're also going to reveal some sneaky moves Razer has been trying to pull for this product, so stay tuned. We've also put the link for these headsets in the description below for you to check out. At an arguably affordable price, Barracuda X can be yours for only $99. Razer has been competitive with the pricing comparable with other wireless models in the market such as the Corsair HS70 Pro and Logitech G733. But is it worth it for the price? We're about to find out. Taking a look at Barracuda X's exterior, it has a metal reinforced headband that is flexible, adding to the comfort and durability of the product. With a similar appearance to pricier Razer Opus headsets, the only branding Razer infused Barracuda X with are its logos embossed on the headband and ear cups. You can avail the headphones in black, pink, or white according to your preference. At about 55 pounds or 250 grams, there is a certain element of comfort when wearing this headset, much like forgetting that you're wearing anything during an intense campaign or a session. The clamping force is good and won't slip easily or unexpectedly. However, since this is in the more affordable range, there is bound to be a compromise somewhere. The padding on the headband is quite thin so there is a small pressure accumulation. Plus, the memory foam on the ear cups is mediocre and bounces back slower than quality memory foam. More on the ear cups, while the foam is mediocre, it still fits on your ears snugly with their oblong shape. However, one issue you may find with the Barracuda X is that the surface covering may feel a bit harsh. And if you move around too much, there is bound to be a skin against surface contact noise. Fortunately, the plastic shell behind the cups is angled so they are able to fit different ear conformation and sizes. One thing you might consider is the rotation of the Barracuda X ear cups. Unlike usual models, these ear cups rotate facing you. That might provide a bit of discomfort, especially if you're not used to it. Is this a deal breaker? Let us know in the comments down below. Moving on to the accessibility, Razer has decided to drop Synapse connectivity and instead decided to offer a 4-in-1 connectivity. But what does this mean? Usually, devices with a 3-in-1 connectivity just tell you that they have a 2.4GHz Bluetooth and a wired mode. The thing is, Barracuda X does not even have Bluetooth. What? No Bluetooth? Well, 4-in-1 connectivity signifies that it only supports Razer Hyperspeed 2.4GHz, which means that it can only connect to PC, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, and Android devices. The lack of Bluetooth might have made you frown a little, but take note that the Barracuda X provides a plug-and-play solution. After multiple complaints about Razer Synapse, this plug-and-play might just be the right path to walk on for Razer. Wireless connectivity is enabled by a T-shaped USB Type-C dongle comparable to that of Arctis 1. Now this is a little controversial ever since the Barracuda X was released. This shape is perfect for Nintendo Switch and Android devices but might be an issue with your computer ports because of the space it takes. Luckily, there is a 1.5-meter USB Type-A extender included in the headset box which is very useful if you don't have a Type-C port. Razer has justified the dongle shape, attributing it to best wireless connectivity and internal workings. As a wireless headset, the controls on Barracuda X are located on the left ear cup. 
Controls on the multi-function power button include long press to toggle power, tap to receive and end a call, and double tap to skip a song forward or triple tap to skip it back. Back again at compromises, the volume wheel is a little too loose which may result in accidental volume changes. There is also a mic mute button together with a charging port, 3.5mm audio, and microphone jack. So now that we have already covered the design, accessibility, and wireless connection, let's move on to the battery, microphone, and sound quality. At this point, do you think the Barracuda X is worth it for its price? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Boasting a battery rating of 20 hours continuous usage with enabled sleep functionality after 15 minutes, Barracuda X is able to compete with other headsets for its price. Unfortunately, it does not have fast charging. As you can remember, Razer has removed Synapse for this model, so you don't have to install anything. However, because of this, you are also unable to check for battery status. Fortunately, there is an LED at the bottom of the headset that blinks red when the battery is down to 10% and it's time for a recharge. The microphone in this headset is detachable and reasonably pliable. You can go without it if you just want to casually listen to music. The microphone quality is passable but it might have difficulties picking up voice. There are also no controls for noise management but the Barracuda X microphone still delivers. As for the sound quality with a 40mm Triforce driver similar to that of Black Shark series, there is a notable separation between lows, mids, and highs. The Barracuda X has a nice balanced tone to it and not bass heavy, so you might get some getting used to if you're a fan of bows or beats. Still playing using this headset remains an experience because there is no noticeable harshness on the highs. The headset has a lot of power to it, but if you play games that involve brushing against bushes, it still delivers a realistic ring without hurting your ears. One downside to this headset is that the pads are slightly open so the sound might not be as immersive as compared to competitors such as the HyperX Cloud 2. Say in a crowded train or school cafeteria, you are still going to hear your environment faintly. Despite its shortcomings, Barracuda X sets itself apart from its headset siblings with its mobile-friendly features unlike models such as Black Shark V2 Pro that are desktop only. In conclusion, Barracuda X is a budget-friendly gaming headset that may have its downsides, but still delivers in terms of durability and sound quality. A next product means a budget version for Razer, so we are definitely going to see an upgraded and improved version of the Barracuda X headset in the near future. That's it for our video today. Do you agree with Razer's decision to make Barracuda X Synapse free? Or would you rather have it reinstated on future versions? Let us know by commenting down below. Also check out the link in the description if you want to get your hands on one of these bad boys. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video if you liked our content. Subscribe to our channel for more tech content and exclusive information on recent products like this one. See you next time!